Hello, it's Keith here, and this is lesson 72 of the platform specific series of my ZX Assembly programming tutorials. And we're looking at sound on the ZX Spectrum today. Now, we did do this once in the past. I wrote a little sound driver, which I refer to as Chibi Sound. We've got a new enhanced version, which is known as Chibi Sound Pro. Now, the Pro title might be a bit of an exaggeration or a bit optimistic, but it's at least a little bit better than last time. Last time, Sound Driver was designed to make just a, a small number of beeps, and it was really designed for a Space Invaders type game where we just needed very simple sound effects. Chibi Sound Pro is designed to allow us to play music and it's designed to do this in the same way on all of the systems. It's a, essentially a hard abstraction layer where we provide common values to the driver and the driver has to work out how to make that actually do what we asked it on the underlying hardware. Now the underlying hardware of the ZX Spectrum as we are treating it today is it, we're just using the beeper speaker. There's another tutorial on using the AY sound chip which does work on the Spectrum 128K but today we're just looking at the beeper and all the beeper can really do is it can make tones it can make distortion noises and that's about it we can't really do volume levels and we can't really play more than one sound at a time now Chibi Sound Pro is intended to work with multiple sound channels and so we're gonna have to deal with that and what we're gonna do is basically in this case is we're gonna cache all of the channels that we were requested to play and then we're gonna look and see which the first channel is actually playing and we're gonna play that now um, Chibi Sound Pro considers lower numbered channels to be more important than higher number ones so if we're asked to play channel 0 and channel 3 and we have only got one channel we're going to play channel 0 and ignore channel 3. That's what we're going to do. Now the Chibi Sound Pro driver basically is defined as using um, three parameters of four bytes in total. The first byte is in the H register and that is going to be the channel number in bits 0 to 6. So theoretically 128 channels but in practice today just one channel. So a bit, a bit of an exaggeration maybe using seven bits there. But um, And the top bit is the noise enable bit. So if this is on this is one we will make a noise. If this is off, there will be no noise. It will just be a clear tone. Now, the L register is, in theory, the volume, but we're not actually going to be using that today because we can't really use volumes. But what we are going to do is we're going to treat any value under 64 as being silent. So uh, 255 is the loudest, and anything that's very low is, is effectively silent. A lot of systems only use 4-bit volumes anyway, so that's why I'm doing that. Finally, the pitch is in the DE register, and this will go from 0, which is a low pitch, to 65535, which is a high pitch. And it should be noted that the, um, the, the, the frequencies that we pass, like 32768, for example, won't sound the same on every system. And so when it comes to playing music, what we do is we have a table, a lookup table of the octave, and we look up the values that we need to put into DE to get the sounds that we actually need to play music. That's what we're going to be doing. That's what we do. Now, how do we actually do sound on the ZX Spectrum? Well, basically, we have one port. Uh, we have the port FE, and there is a single bit of that port. Uh, the bit 4 actually controls the sound. And so whenever we write a 1 to that bit, we will effectively set the bit to high, and when we write 0, we'll set it to low. And we do this repeatedly in the timed fact fashion to create a frequency. Now we can't create volumes on this system with loud and quiet so this one isn't so relevant but what we can do is we can create pitches and so basically by timing the amount of time between the, um, the changes of that bit we can create the wave and if we change it very quickly we will end up with a high pitch like that. That's, that's what a high pitch will look like in an oscilloscope and what a coincidence I have one here. There it is, there's a oscilloscope. And a low pitch will look like, and it's now in the way, that a low pitch will look like that. So we increase the time between flipping that bit. And that's what we're going to do. So basically, we're going to take that to DE value, we're going to create it into a delay, and we're going to use that to flip the bit. And then we're going to need to loop a few times and flip the bit repeatedly to make the tone. Now, the, the slightly tricky thing on this system is because um, the amount of time between the flips will differ. Um, we might want to make a different number of waves. So for very low tone, we might want just to do that loop once. But if you look, well, how many waves are there here in the one wave of that one? It's an awful lot. And so we're going to need to repeat a different number of times depending on the frequency we're playing so that our notes sounds the same. Now, of course, in all of these cases, it's, we're going to have to use the CPU to count the time and we're going to have to use the CPU to flip that bit. So it's really going to take, um, in the case of today's example, all of the processing power to make the tone and and so um, basically it's not going to be particularly practical to play music while gameplay is happening. I can do it to a very limited extent, but it, it's not really designed to do that, today's example. But um, that's, that's why you never saw Spectrum games really with beeper music during the gameplay. Games like Dizzy, I believe they only had them get music on the title screen because 
you know, that, that was when it was possible to use all the CPU power to create the music. So that's what we're going to do. Let's go over to our source code and let's take a look at what we're going to be dealing with today. So first of all, let's try out our example code. We've got two examples. The main one we're going to be focusing on, though, is the Chibi Sound Pro test, which is just, just a test of the driver. But I will show you the so-called Chibi Tracks uh, music player that I have written, and that will that's what uses Chibi Sound Pro to play music. So let's fire up this example here. Okay, so we're now playing our tone, and you can hear we've got a quite obnoxiously high tone. Now, if I use the um, O and P keys here, which is simulating a joystick, I can change the number that you can see at the top of the screen, and that's the value that's being passed in DE. And you can see as I change that, the size of the waveform above me is changing. Now, if I press the Enter key, you can see it becomes a bit erratic, and that is our noise tone. And basically what we're doing is we are changing, we're adding some randomness to when we flip the bits, so some of the bit flips don't actually occur, and that is to create a distorted sound. So we're going to see that in our code as well. Okay, so that was the example that was just designed to test the driver, but here we've got the music playing example. And this is a um, file, a music file that I created for my um, Suck Hunt game, I think this was, I forget now, but um, basically um, this was a file that was designed for the Amstrad CPC AY. The file is being played in the exact same format here. There's been no reconversion of the binary data for this. So um, by creating this multi-platform driver, we were able to make the music at least sound something like it was supposed to on a system with wildly different capabilities. So um, there we go. That's, let's say that's what this is intended for. And that's just a little example of um, it working. Now, you will notice we've got this border effect at the same time as the music's playing. The reason for that is simply that the port that does the um, sound also does the border and so for a bit of a, a a bit of a visual demonstration of what's going on I'm flipping the border bit as I'm flipping the sound bit and so you can see it changing from blue to black as that border bit is flipped now let's actually take a look at the driver so here is the driver that um, I've written for this system now we've got the Chibi octave lookup table here this is the table of values that we can pass to DE for various notes in the octave um, we do have this optional SMS transpose here. This was originally for the master system, which is why there's SMS in there. But basically, some systems are not very, really very capable of very low tones. And so if your music's got very low tones, you may prefer to nudge everything up an octave, which isn't technically correct for the way the music should sound, but it will improve the, the, the way the overall result of the music is. And so I've got that option there to skip one of the lines, effectively bumping the octaves up. And that does benefit the spectrum, which can't really do those low, low frequencies very convincingly. So that's what the octave table there is for. You'll notice you've, we've only got the, um, the sort of pure tones, no sharps or flats. If you want a sharp or a flat, you just take the two values in between. So if you wanted F sharp, you would take F and G, add them together and divide by two. That is what the code does. And we'll look at that in the Chibi Tracks tutorials, which I've got coming up. So we'll cover how that works in those. So that's what we that's how we do our notes. Now the um, ZX Spectrum does have a special function called Chibi Sound Set ZX. Now what this is designed to do is it does two things. The first thing is it it changes the border effect. Now this allows us to turn off that border effect if we don't want to see the colours there. It would say it's really just designed as a demo there, and it's the top bit that does that. The remaining bits are the speed. Now this is the length of the time that we make a tone. Now the default. For the amount of time we're making the tone is 16. Now we can change it to a lower value, a value of three. We'll still make a sound that is at least understandable as the music, but it's much, much faster. Why would you want to do this? Well, remember I said if you, you might want to play your music during a title screen, in which case you've got loads of processing power because you're using it all. Well, the value 16 works quite nicely for that. If you're trying to play sound during an interrupt handler, um, we've got to keep updating that sound effect, making that sound again every tick of the of the view blank you know every time the screen freshes um, but, but a value 16 is going to slow your game down so unless your game is extremely simple that you probably don't want to do that but a value of three that sound will still at least sound something like the music is supposed to but it will actually be fast enough that the game speed won't be significantly uh, reduced so it just depends on what you're trying to do and um, what speed you might want to use and that chibi sound set zx is designed to do that for us so that's what you can use for that now, the system itself, as I say, can only play one sound at a time. So what we're going to do is we're going to cache four sound channels in a virtual sound cache, and we're defining some memory there for that. And we're going to basically just transfer the bytes we're passed. And then once we've done that, we're going to look at all of the, the cache channels and decide which one to actually play. 
Chibi Sound Pro set is what we do when we want to actually um, update the current settings that the music is supposed to be playing. So we pass H, L, D and D for the volume, channel and pitch and of course also the noise in the top bit of L. So that's what we've got there. Now what we're going to do first here is we are going to, we've got an option here. We, we can set it to only use channel zero and in that case we would just return for anything other than channel zero. But the, the better way of doing things I think is to use the virtual channel cache and that's what we're doing here. So we're loading an offset in the channel cache here, multiplying basically the channel number by four here. We're only considering the bottom two bits, so we're using 0 to 3 as a channel number. If we were asked to do channel 127, that would be wrapped around. The music player is only really designed for three channels at the moment, so I'm not expecting that to ever happen, but for future proofing maybe. And we've pushed HL and pop BC here, and that's just meaning that when we load C and B into the cache here, we're actually loading H and L. So we're loading in all of our settings into the cache. Now, whenever we do that, we then just return. But what we have to do every single interrupt tick or every single iteration of our loop on our title screen or whatever we're doing is we have to run the update routine. Now, the ZX Spectrum is one of the few we have to do this. The update routine is designed for systems that need um, active processor interaction to keep the sound playing on a system like the AY. You just tell it to play something and it will play it forever even if the processor crashes. On the ZX Spectrum um, with the beeper, that's not the case. We actually need to remake the sound every single tick and so that's what we're doing here so what we're doing here is we're loading the address of the sound cache we're loading the values in and we are we're testing to find the first sound channel that is actually playing something we're considering playing to be a volume a greater than hexadecimal four zero there 64 and once we find it we jump down here now if we don't find any channel that is actually making any significant sound then we're going to silence the channel now the way we do this is, um, well we don't, we don't actually need to do anything, but if we're playing in a loop where we are repeatedly updating the sound all of the time, um, we need the silent pe periods to be the same length as the noise periods, otherwise the, 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 the gaps in the song would just be uh, invisible and it would just speed through them and the, the song would sound out of sync. We need every um, note to be the same length compared to each other. So we've got a pause here that is roughly the same length of as, as a tone there to keep the sound playing at the same level. However, if we are doing this during an interrupt handler, we don't need that because it's the interrupt timing that's going to deal with that. So we've got this option here to disable that. And in that case, we would just simply return. So that's designed for if we are using an interrupt handler, if we, as I say, um, I've got an example of that coming up, but if we're just doing it in a simple loop, which is what the example you heard there did, um, we do need some kind of delay when there is no sound playing on any of the channels. Now, once we've decided on the channel, we're going to basically get, get things ready to actually do the job. Now, what we're going to do first is we are going to test the top bit of L, which is the noise enable or disable option. So. What we're going to basically do is we're going to do self-modifying code and we're going to patch in a value here. Now this is a pair of bits, this pair of bits here. This bit here is the speaker bit, so that is what actually creates our tone. This bit here is actually the border effect. So basically what we're going to do is we're going to take this line, which is our pure tone line, we're loading in a pure tone here. But if we were to load in something here that loaded A with a, a, a pseudo random number, uh, this would actually create an irregularity in when we flip that bit and that would create a distorted tone. So exactly what we're going to do. So if bit 7 of L is 0, then we want to make a clear tone. And so what we're going to do is we are going to load this value in here, which is the, va the value you just saw. And that is in hexadecimal 113E. That is the bytecode for those commands. And we're going to patch that in to this address here, which is what it already is already. But if it if we want to actually make noise, we're going to load in the command LDA comma R. Now R is the is the memory refresh register and it basically just goes up all, all of the time. And so if we just read values in from it, we'll get sort of random values from that. And so that's a good way of getting random numbers. And that is the bytecode for that command. And then we're going to patch that in to noise effect, the address noise effect plus two minus two. Now the label is called noise effect plus two because it's after the command and the command is two bytes long. And I add plus two to the end because I know I need to subtract two to the actual data that I want to change, which is this line here. So that address minus two is going to change the whole of that line. And we would patch it in with load a comma r if we were making a noise. A bit complex, I know, but self-modifying code is often the fastest way and the most memory efficient way. So if you can cope with it, um, doing it is unfortunately often desirable. So that's what I've done in this case because it's such a 
it's such a time sensitive loop there because the, it's making the tone so that's what I did there now what we're going to do next is we're going to take our DE pair and we're going to convert this into a delay in between the bit flips because remember we need to flip our bits so if there's a high pitch we need to then you need a short time between the flips and if it's a low pitch we need a long time and so we're going to convert DE into a delay between those flips so we're going to flip the bits from here basically to here so we we only want basically 10 bits and so we're going to repeatedly shift the bits like this and then we're going to ditch that bottom byte there so we're going to have basically two bits of D in the top um, byte and then the remaining bits of D and two bits of E in the bottom byte and um, we're going to be we're dis going to discard the rest but we're also going to need to flip the bits and so that's what we're doing here we're loading B but we're flipping the bits there and then we're loading E and we're flipping the bits there and so now we've got a 10 bit delay in DE that is the amount of time in between each tick that we want to wait now we're also loading H with the value 16 which is the value that we specified if we did specify an option with the set fx with the set zx option here and that is the amount of time that we're going to make the tone for and that's going to vary depending on the delay between the tone because irrespective of how many times we flip that bit we want each tone to be the same length in time irrespective of the actual pitch it was and so we're going to try and do that okay so what we're doing next is we're updating zx tone plus two here with the delay um, that is being loaded into bc later for our delay loop and then here is our main loop so we're loading a either with that value there or with the r register and remember it's bit four that is the one that flips the um the, the sound it's these three bits here that are the border effect so those are relevant to the sound we're then XORing with D, and D is going to be updated later, so when we do this next time, D is going to basically flip the wave the other way around. We're then ANDing so that only the two bits for the um, border effect and also the sound are um, kept. And we're then storing D with that new value so that that flip occurs next time. And we're then writing that value to port FE, which is the sound port. And so that will update the sound as required, as I say, depending on whether that is a 1 or a 0. So that's what we're doing there. Now, once we've done that, our next task is basically to have a delay. So we're loading BC with our delay value here. And then what we're doing here is we are loading the H register and we're subtracting the top byte of our delay. And if that has gone below zero, we're returning. And the reason for that is, as I say, the amount of time that we're going to delay might vary, but we want the length to be roughly the same. And so by subtracting the top byte of that delay length from H um, and then returning as soon as it goes below zero, we're basically making sure that, roughly speaking, the length of the, to the total tone will be the same irrespective of the delay. Now, once we've done that test, we're then going to decrease B and C here, our loop. And um, once we've done that, we're going to jump back to the tone loop and we're going to flip the bit of the sound wave again. And we're going to keep doing that all the time until that H value goes below zero, which is our, um, our return situation. And so that is going to create a tone for roughly the amount, same amount of time, irrespective of the frequency. And, and that's basically how we do it. As I say, it, it's a bit of a pain. Um, it's not an exact science, and I'm certainly not going to tell you that this is the best way of doing it, or I've created some amazing code. I, I think there's some very, very clever people who've written um, sound drivers that can do multiple, sound like they can do multiple sounds at the same time and things, and I'm sure I'm sure there's far better ones than mine. Um, this is just the one I've been able to write, and as I say, the, the purpose of all of this was to write a simple sound driver and a simple music player so that I could write multi-platform music and have music played on all the systems and um, that's what I've done. If you like what you've seen, please like and subscribe. If you want to see more work on music and multi-platform music trackers, please, cons please consider backing me on Patreon because uh, I've written a tracker for Windows. It's in C Sharp. Um, it's not something I'm particularly good at, something I particularly wanted to do. And so I'm only going to continue working on stuff like that if people are willing to back me because for my interests and for my needs, uh, it vastly exceeds what I need so far. So I don't need to do any more development on it, but I will do so if it, if there is demand from other people. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed what you've seen today. Thanks for watching and goodbye.